Right. So uh, I'm going to talk about uh, direct neck fragmentation and how can we reduce that uh, by means of uh, a caching of large pages at some level at uh, core MM. Now, uh, there are a few, uh, first of all, it's pretty much x86 centric because uh, other architectures either don't care or just cannot fragment their direct map. Uh, ARM can't, uh, can't implement set memory primitives uh, when the map uh, the physical memory with the large pages. A power PC implements something entirely different and I think it works only at boot time. So for now it's pretty much x86, who cares about the large pages in the direct map. A cases that do fragment direct map uh, as of now is uh, anything that allocates code like, uh, like models, BPF programs, uh, F-trace, K-probes, uh, there is a secret memory. Uh, last email told that there is a potential use case for these things, uh, for re reducing direct net fragmentation for SNP and TDX. I can't say I understand how, but uh, maybe it is the case. And uh, as we are going more and more secure, there will be additional protection mechanisms. I presume that we'll uh, use set memory operations to change permissions on this, on that part, of the, this, on that uh, range of the direct map, and that will uh, make the situation worse. For, for example, uh, Rick H. Comp posted a patch about uh, using PKS for page table protection uh, that uh, also required uh, 4K pages uh, and so on. The, there were several ideas. Uh, the first thing that uh, came when I posted secret map was, uh, oh, you're fragmenting our direct map. So uh, the idea was to cache, uh, to allocate every time to make page, and uh, use the page, the 4K pages from that uh, to make page for the user that uh, needs uh, different permissions on 4K basis. Uh, there were several different proposals for caching them. The initial uh, secret mem caching that was uh, doing pretty much what I said inside secret mem. Then uh, Rick proposed to use shrinkers uh, close to the user and uh, whenever there is a memory pressure, use that they, those shrinkers to release 4K pages from the fragmented uh, pages in the direct map. And the last one, uh, what I tried to do is to implement a GFP unmapped flag. And <laughs> Sorry. It in new type, my, my, my great type for unmapped pages. So the idea is that uh, once, once we have uh, an allocation of two meg page, uh, once we have a request for GFP unmapped, uh, we all use the existing page allocator mechanisms to populate the migrate unmapped. The entire page block is marked as unmapped and the, all three pages in that page block are removed from the direct map. This causes a, a single split of two meg page and we get two meg worth of uh, up to two meg worth of uh, free memory that can be uh, that can be that can can be uh, allocated to those who need the uh, protections at 4K granularity. Uh, then, uh, whenever the page is freed, it remains unmapped uh, on the free list, and it's called a responsibility to. Map it somewhere. For instance, secret mem would map it to the user page tables, uh, and I did an experiment with the uh, Vimalloc uh, with the module alloc in x86 that allocates uh, memory for code pages. Uh, Vimalloc that has GFP unmapped will do essentially mapping inside the Vimalloc area, and uh, it kind of works. Uh, so uh, I am not a huge expert on page allocator, so uh, I could have missed something really important. 
I still run into issues with uh, TLB flushing here and there. Uh, but uh, what do you say if this looks sane? Nobody knows. <laughs> Mike. Michal, can you give the mic there? Yeah, so. Uh, yeah. So my experience is that uh, uh, smashing everything into the page allocator is usually not the best way to do that because uh, uh, essentially any change like that for uh, those uh, mostly outliers uh, is bringing up uh, overhead for those that the allocator is heavily uh, optimized for. And, and I'm not sure whether we have Mel um, online. He, he probably has a lot to, to oh, say about that, so I just. That's the overhead. Can I be heard? Yes. Yeah, I can hear myself. I go back. Thanks. I think to wrap, putting something like that hit directly into the page allocator would be serious overkill. Um, there would be the storage requirements for it uh, in the zone and whatnot. But aside from that, the migrate unmapped cannot fall back to any other area nor any other. Sorry. The migrate unmapped cannot fall back to any other migrate type or vice versa because of the nature of what it is. Um, meaning that there, it, it's just you're just carving out a part of the available allocator for one user. And for one user, it'd be more appropriate to use a mempool. Uh, a, a, a mempool that only deals, with, that only gets refilled or the pieces uh, with two megabyte pages. I didn't carve out and the migrate uh, unmapped falls back to unmovable uh, and the uh, movable and the uh, the normal normal migrate types can fall back to migrate un unmapped. Then you have pages that are, that have a different direct map that uh, it, it was the point at all. Like why, why do you need a migrate? Unmapped when you can just the call. page. The page is unmapped only with uh, only when it is on free <coughs> list on my great unmap or or when it is used by something that maps it elsewhere. Uh, but when there is a fallback from uh, any other migrate type to migrate unmapped, uh, it uh, restores the direct map mapping for present. It wouldn't restore to mag mapping, but it will still be present in the direct map. It seems that then it just shuffles the problem around um, uh, because it, 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 um, the most of the effect is, is it's timing. Like it, granted, it's it's a migrate type that would be kept all together, so like free uh, in mass or be allocated in mass. But once migrate types are able to fall back to it, that eventually gets polluted and you lose all advantage. So give, give, basically, given a long enough length of time, the direct map gets fragmented anyway. So it, it, uh, I just feel that it yeah, changes yeah, the shape of the problem, saying, but doesn't actually solve it. But I don't know. I don't think we have any solutions that won't fragment direct map in the end for long enough running machine. I'd still be reluctant to, for something that that is eventually going to fragment us anyway. I don't see why that we carry the complexity inside the page allocator with something like a bit pool to do the uh, same job. Uh, another possibility is to carry, carry this complexity next to page allocator. Or do it uh, for every user. Like BPF has an, its own cache, uh, secret mem has its own cache, uh, page tables with PKS have uh, their own cache. Uh, I don't really think that's uh, so great. So if we are to avoid fragmentation of direct map, or at least reduce it, we need to have the caching somewhere, right? Yeah, that's why I would say mempool, because they, adding migrate types is not free. They need all of the, not only do they need all of the, uh, of the uh, additional body uh, double linked lists for each migrate type that's added, but it increases the size of the page block bitmap as well. So you're adding small amounts of percentages over. And while it's not absolutely killer to the, to the concept, um, I'm just not, I'm not a fan 
on that basis that like we're increasing the complexity cost and storage cost of the page allocator and they it could just have been done with a slab cache <clears throat> a slab cache one that's only ever allocates order nine pages and is split into 4k chunks mm. or again memory pool a, a memory mm. pool that only refills or depletes on, on two megabytes I had an RFC like a while ago that uh, it was a dedicated cache and that allocates to make chunks and split, the, split the, them up. And the feedback I got from several people was that probably just move it to the page allocator. I'm sure you didn't look at that, so. No, I didn't. Uh, I can try to find it. So, I think it'd be better off fi finding it after the call because they're using up. Yeah. A, so a chunk uh, anyway, time there the, the, I, I can send it somewhere. Uh, uh, so th that idea was to have a cache next to page allocator, though, and uh, it still had some hooks into the page allocator. Uh, probably slab would be a better idea. I don't know. I know that uh, BPF folks uh, got uh, strong push pull, pushback uh, for using huge VMalloc for that. Uh, and uh, I also think VMalloc doesn't really help them. At least in their case, uh, they didn't have a fallback for 4K pages, so eventually they would run out of 2 meg pages uh, and uh, that will stop anything. So. Uh, yes. So, um, can I ask the next question now? Is it working? Oh, okay, so uh, for the uh, GFP on map part, if I understand you correctly, uh, we are also experimenting with a similar idea, but for a different purpose. So basically, we want to improve compaction um, and to reduce external fermentation. So uh, our idea is to uh, group page blocks by page types. Basically, um, the idea is, uh, you know, um, has been um, there for a long time. We want to group uh, allocations from uh, different page blocks by lifetimes. Um, you know, we, uh, objects allocated in different page blocks. And so, um, in addition to uh, movable, unmovable. So the general idea is like, okay, uh, anon pages goes into um, no, same group page blocks. File pages go into the, uh, uh, another uh, different uh, groups, uh, different group of page blocks. And uh, also, we also um, distinguish mapped and unmapped pages. Because on mapped pages, um, are within a um, to migrate a page block containing only on mapped pages would be faster, because it doesn't require uh, TLB flush and unmapping, right? To unmap it is uh, the there is a TLB flash when you unmap, and there is an additional TLB flash because uh, we need to map it back and, and ma unmap it back in a prep a new page. Right, because uh, if a page block contains only unmapped pages, no, and the, uh, the other page block contains mapped pages. Well, and are, you, are you guys talking about two different unmapped? Because I, I think, think it's different. I'm talking map. about You're direct talking map, about unmap, unmap, and uh, Lee, you is talking memory. about the uh, oh, users. okay. They're talking about a curtis space? Yes. yes. Sorry, yes. I told you I, I didn't you. Yeah. So, okay. Sorry for the noise. <laughs> so, so, last email, yeah. Last time we'll go ahead. Yeah, 
you're on mute if you're talking. No, we can't hear you. So yeah, uh, we'll go on to the next question. You can, you can type it in the chat or see if we can figure out the, the, the talk. So I, I just have a, like a general comment and like everybody who knows me knows that I detest unmovable memory. Um, <laughs> it is unmovable. It is unmovable and as, as we discussed, like there might be ways for secret mem to, to turn it conditionally movable. So my question would be if you turn it like into a migrate type and once you have like the same type of movable unmapped, then you would need yet another migrate type to, to reflect that, I assume. Th that for me might be an indication that you might actually want to have like e external caches that resemble like these, these details. Like for example, secret mem could support migration of unmapped pages in some scenarios and then TDX might not support it but some other might support it so you would have like two different caches that cache like the different TDX, semantics. TDX might support it. I don't know how much effort it would be for KVM itself. Yeah, but uh, like ju just in general, uh, like it might be possible maybe in 10 years, mem, maybe in 20 years. Secret mem could support uh, movable pages probably. A PKS uh, for page tables, I don't think so. Um, now uh, the the code pages, let's say for BPF and modules, uh, also would be unmovable. Right. That's just like in, in in general, like if you punch this into migrate type, um, you'd need yet another migrate type, most probably once we turn it to like movable, uh, at least some. Some things that might indicate, at least to me, that it might be better to have this somehow so, external. So my idea was to fall back first on unmovable anyway, and then on reclaimable, and as a last resort to movable. So if I take a page block from my grade type, I try to avoid movable. So it's anyway unmovable, and it, it's kept unmovable, right? But for long running systems, everything can happen, right? Uh, and external cache we still it, it still will be quite complex to make these pages in external cache movable unless you do a cache per user and then you duplicate uh, pretty much of things okay i would have another uh, uh, Another reason why the page allocator is probably not the best place, because if you really have to uh, fall back or do reuse um, an existing um, unmapped memory, then this would uh, do all the flushing. And uh, essentially what you get is an unpredictable and hard to debug spike in performance, which can be seen in many places then. And I suspect this will generate more problems than, uh, than it actually solves. So I guess uh, I'm with Mel on, on the idea that you should probably build on top of the page allocator, make use those, all the, those use cases use that. Um, use the, uh, and, and then you do not. Yet do another slab. Or a slab cache or, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll read Vesmil's comment. He said, uh, if, if, if I recall correctly, the idea of using new migrate type was to avoid the situation where we fragment memory with the two megabyte blocks for unmapped memory that are then sparsely used. He also goes on to say, the fallbacks then allow using the memory with the cost of fragmenting direct map. You're unmuted right now on our side, Vesmil, if you, if you want to try to jump in again. But we weren't, we weren't able to hear you last time. Can you repeat the last sentence? He said, the fallbacks then allow using the memory with the cost of fragmenting direct map. Uh, and potential uh, performance spikes on allocation and free path. Uh, although uh, the TLB flashing can be made local if we do preempt disable uh, at uh, prep new page. So, 
So, so then uh, the short uh, map and map uh, in the prep new page of uh, free page uh, something. Uh, you only need uh, to flash local TLB. It's essentially involved uh, local TLB, one page from uh, the local TLB. We are talking about uh, users that count every single cycle. And I mean, every CPU cycle when they're allocating, this would be in a range of unacceptable. So I, I'm not really sure this will, this will fly. Uh, the, another way is to keep them on the, well, anyway, you still have to unmap somewhere and flush TLD, yes. Yeah, so just to wrap up, I would prefer to uh, have less memory that the allocator are, is seeing rather than having unpredictable uh, performance spikes just because we would try to squeeze every single byte that might be delayed. It's not exactly um, squeezing every single byte. It's more about uh, uh, trying to avoid fragmenting uh, in a central place. like. There is any, we anyway have to do something because like BPF uh, fragments the code and the pressure on LT will be is much more severe. And they're, they're trying to fix that separately though. Uh, with their BPF custom, pack? With their custom allocator, where it's just, they get two megabyte pages and they pack and they reuse. So we need like five custom allocators right now, right? <laughs> You can build one and, and they got a them. huge pushback on that one if you didn't see. So uh, I'll probably talk with last email about uh, doing something slab like uh, slab flag maybe. So every user would be able to do KMM cache create with something and that KMM cache will be backed up by two Mac pages, probably. Can that I be heard be now? Option. Yes. Yes. Oh, great. I had to restart it. <laughs> yeah, one thing. I think I wanted to know that if I read correctly the BPF uh, stuff has uh, an, another constraint that the programs are of different size, so they cannot use slab cache because that's designed for objects of the same size. So they we already probably have can't support anyway, Vlastimil. Yeah, uh, Hannes, so, so that's know? the reason. Uh, if they already have even before to keep uh, for two Mac pages, they had an allocator that. Uh, Shares memory between different programs, no? Um, they, no. No? They, for every program they load it regardless. Um, if it's just a couple of bytes, so they just would allocate a, a page. So it's just module alloc and uh, that's all? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then they would update the direct map and split it. Yeah, I, I've read the uh, LWM this week that they are trying to push a consolidated allocator that had to be disabled in the end, but and they need it by 519, yes. So, yes, so we can probably forget about that use case, but yeah, otherwise uh, we can try the slab approach. But I thought one of the, one of the use cases was also that, uh, that uh, a memory that was initially allocated uh, as normally would be then converted to unmapped on the fly and that uh, wouldn't be possible if uh, if it had to be like pre-allocated from the special allocator. But with my grade type it can be done with the cost of not being the most efficient at the moment. If we do something like slab that backs a, a cache with two Mac pages and hands out 4K pages, it could work. If 
so the, the, there is a indeed limitation for object size uh, that uh, such cache would uh, provide. Uh, all the use cases I was talking about uh, were about uh, getting 4K page. Okay. So a generic, uh, generic slab with uh, I don't know how much memory, anyway you can have uh, objects with different protection in the same page, right? Yeah. I don't know if, they, if there are such users at all. Okay, I guess we can try this approach. Yeah. So I'm, I'm the one that fell on the BPF side. So oh, from my point of view, I think it makes sense to have uh, like uh, some cache to make sure we, we do not go all the way to 4K page. Because if you think about the one gigabyte page, that's one entry in the page table. You split it into two megabytes, that's 512. If we give just one 512 page among these to 4K, that's uh, one K page entries in the page table. So it like, feels like we just split a little bit more. It's actually the double the overhead on the number of page table entries. So in our experience, we have been using like all sort of techniques to reduce the overhead in TLB, especially the instruction TLB. So I feel this makes sense to have a special cache. This is for all the like executables, like kernel modules, trampolines, BPF programs, like uh, we would just have one, two, maybe it depends. Like could be just a handful of like uh, two megabyte pages just for executable. I think, like if, from our experience, that's a huge benefit. Like uh, performance, we we have like a uh, huge pages for application test uh, tax. That's like five ten percent. Performance benefit, like multiply the size of our fleet, that's a huge number. Uh, we also see like a, a popular BPF program is on the list of uh, instruction TLB miss, and that's why we start thinking about like how we can do that. So from my point of view, if we have like uh, caches that we only do two megabyte page, we do not go all the way down to four kilobytes. I think the benefit will be like a, a significant. Like well, I believe with slab it would be possible. I don't see why not. Vlastimil probably does, but I don't. Uh, I think it's time, right? Yeah, then, yeah, I think that's the time. Thank you very much. So we still have an agreement we should need the cash, but we don't know how to do it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs>